they're going to look like just another face in the crowd and you're going to stand out more. So my prediction for 2023 is So my predictions for 2023. Um number 1. Chat GPT, which everyone has been playing with, um is going to drive an explosion of growth on Twitter, LinkedIn, Medium and Reddit. Okay? You're going to see a lot more engagement in social media because of chat GPT. You'll have a lot more reinforcement of existing ideas and a lot more noise. Chat GPT in general I think is a good thing. Long term it's going to be a good thing. Very interesting tech. The the way that they train the model, so the language they use, um the the database of essays that they look at, every Chat GPT isn't designed to spit out a contrarian idea. <laughs> okay? It is designed to spit out a very reinforced traditional idea based on how the model's been trained the language that's being used there's a lot of people who are just going to go to chat gpt they're going to put in i need a you know give me a post on mqtt and they're going to slap it on linkedin you can see lots of people doing it already there this creates a really good opportunity okay the one thing chat gpt is never going to do it's never going to give the controversial contrarian opinion. And so the people who are giving the controversial contrarian opinions, their contrast is going to stand out even more. And that's a huge opportunity. One of the greatest lessons I ever learned in digital media, I learned it from Zach accidentally, okay? Zach didn't intend to teach me this, but I learned it through observation. What in a and it's an extension of something my dad told me when I was a kid. We were talking to my uh, little side bar here. I was talking to my dad about um, talking to girls. Like when I was ready to date, how do I talk to girls? Um, and my father said to me and my brothers, uh, net, you know, use the pickup line no one ever, no one else ever uses. And I said, what's that? And he said, be yourself. He said, you don't want to try and trick someone into believing them into them believing you're someone you're not because at the end of the day if what you do is present uh, an image of yourself that isn't who you actually are they're eventually going to figure out who you are but more most importantly when you when you take inventory of the people around you you'll never know if they're there for the real you or if they're there for the one that you presented to them so always present who you actually are. If anyone ever hangs out with me, goes to, has a drink with me at a bar, hang, you know, hangs out with me anytime, the one thing that they always say is that you are I'm exactly the same person in real life as I am on here. I there's no this is fucking me. You know, Cheryl, everyone else on the team will tell you this is how I talk normally. This is just I'm having a conversation with an audience, my true authentic self. If you choose to do digital media and you choose to be your true authentic self, then chat GPT and all the people who are going to be trying to use chat GPT to broadcast their ideas. Yeah, it's not their ideas. It's other people's ideas. Um, they're going to look like just another face in the crowd and you're going to stand out more. So my prediction for 2023 is chat GPT is going to make it easier for novel ideas to be contrasted because everyone's going to be saying the same thing. Number two, prediction number two, the unified namespace option or adoption is going to continue to expand exponentially. This is obvious that this is going to happen. But if you look at the number of articles that were written in 2021 to 2022, it was just an explosion of UNS. Think about how long we've been talking about it. I've been educating on UNS since 2016, 17. It took a couple of years for it to get adopted because we had to have the successes. And now it's everywhere. Okay. UNS drives success in industry 4.0 and digital transformation. Okay. And, and the major impact there 
the uh, the wide adoption of UNS, it's going to force my a Microsoft to change the way that they do their cloud offerings. And I think they're already doing it, by the way. I, I want to give Microsoft credit. I don't want to pick on them here. It's going to force companies like Accenture, McKinsey, and Deloitte to learn how to architect with a unified namespace. Because right now, I, I spent this last year where I peer-reviewed Accenture, McKinsey, Deloitte, um, Wipro um, architectures, and all of them were linear, deterministic, um, point-to-point architectures. Okay, wide adoption of UNS across the industry is going to force the major players to adopt. And once they do, then you hit your critical mass. So 2023 is the year that's going to happen. And you, this community who's been learning, architecting, strategizing, technologizing, solving problems using UNS for the last few years, will have a huge advantage over those who are late to the game. And number three, which I've already alluded to, digital supply chain will begin to alleviate the just-in-time supply chain issues. At a macro, at a, at a macro level, we're going to see that. Okay, um, stores Stores that have better inventory management Common digital ecosystems, updated systems. Look at what's happened to Southwest. All, all of the cancellations that happened at Southwest around uh, New Year's all or around Christmas, all of that could be traced to um, siloed data systems. All of it. The, we, we ha- the market has a unique opportunity to solve major supply chain issues using digital infrastructure and digital supply chain because more and more companies are becoming more and more mature in their digital journeys. And we're going to see more and more communications in 2023 about how digital supply chain is what solved our supply chain issues. Okay. Which is going to make the argument to companies just how bad they need a digital supply chain instead of a linear supply chain. Okay. Um, And then one last thing I want to close with here. I did this post yesterday um, talking about data interoperability. You know, someone had asked me, um, you know, one of the challenges that we've had with HiByte, which I'm huge on. I think HiByte will be the biggest IoT platform. I, I, um, um, in the market. I mean, as long as it doesn't get gobbled up, <clears throat> everyone's going to need high bite, right? Because there's no competitor out there. You got MuleSoft from Salesforce, but that's higher up the stack, does a shitty job compared, does a really shitty job compared to high bite. High bite is the most revolutionary um, <clears throat> data transformation tool in the market. Okay. <coughs> What Aaron and the team is doing in terms of their expansion is just phenomenal in terms of if you look at the roadmap and the direction they're going. But I, I, one of the challenges that people, that integrators have been having is getting HiByte adopted in, in their proof of concept because in the beginning, when you're only integrating one machine or a couple of machines or one area, you can get away doing data transformation using an IoT platform like Ignition or Frameworks, right? You can get away with doing modeling and transmission using something that won't scale, okay? So you could take the shortcut. The problem is, is that scalability matters, okay? And if I choose to do something like using my IoT platform up front to do all my modeling, What I'm doing is I'm creating technical debt that I have to undo. I got to pay back once I'm ready to scale. And so what's happening is I'm spending six, eight, 10, 12 months doing refactoring of my technical debt because I didn't make the right architectural choice up front. 
And so one of the things that I, and I haven't even approached high bite about this yet, but hopefully Omar, if you're watching or Tony or Aaron, hopefully you guys like this idea. Um, I, what I want to do is I want to do a high bite educational series um, at IOT.university. And we want I want to, I want to teach executives why it is you got to make the right data interoperability choice, data transformation choice up front. And I want to teach engineers how to maximize and leverage a tool like HiByte up front for data transformation. Okay. Um, and I'm thinking something like five to seven parts, right? Um, and the reason why is because there's a, there's, this is a, in, in, there's an issue in the market right now where people are taking shortcuts up front that they can't pay for later. Okay. And my post on LinkedIn and Twitter was data interoperability in IoT isn't as complicated as it sounds. It's all about translating many languages into one language used by all smart things in the business in service of making data the most valuable commodity of all. You prioritize this or fail. Simple. Um, why am I so big on HiByte? This is, man, this is really important here. You know what HiByte is? It is a digital translator for industrial languages into one or more languages of your choice. And it gives you the ability to create information models from your data. Okay. Remember, data is just something that happened and when. Okay. And an information model is context applied to that thing that happened and when. So I can put a couple of events together. I can multiply them together. I can put in a serial number and a model number and an install date. That's an information model, right? A data model is just something that happened and when, okay? You know what HiByte is? It is a software that translates languages into one or more languages. Well, Someone asked me, like, why does HiByte not have a competitor? And I said, well, that's fucking easy. Who built the best OPC server in the world? What's an OPC server? An OPC server is uh, nothing but a piece of software that takes all the languages on the plant floor, the drivers, and converts them into one language, OPC. Okay? It's a translator. Who built the best one in the world? It's beyond debate. It's Kep server, right? Everyone would agree that Kepware built the best OPC server, which is a language translator on the planet. Who was at the helm? Tony Payne. Who is at the helm at HiByte? Tony Payne. The difference is, is the language translator he's building now is one level above what he already led at Kepware. Now, I may not sit here and explain why I'm so high and mighty on what it is these guys do, but that's the fucking reason. And if I'm going to pay somebody to write me a piece of software that's going to translate all human languages into one language, well, the first thing I'm going to do is pick someone who speaks all the human languages. Everyone has to translate all the languages on the plant floor and in the business into one common language or two common languages. You give me the list of people who are capable of doing that. I, I only know of three to six guys on the planet who can do it, guys and gals. That's why Highbyte is going to explode because the their market is all manufacturers. It's not some manufacturers, but moreover, it's all commercial entities. It's all home automation consumers. The steps that Arduino's taking with Pro and Portenta is merging together control on the commercial side and the home side with control on the industrial side. And what Highbyte is doing in terms of translating industrial languages into common business language merges the two together as well.
And if there's anything that we are going to see in terms of the biggest moves in 2023, it's going to be all centered around the merging of that industrial space, commercial, and home consumer.